Start of Chapter 2 In the words of the Master Just one full prophecy وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ And remember, Jesus, the son of Mary, said, يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ O children of Israel, I am the messenger of God sent to you. مُصَدِّقَ الْلِّمَ بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَاتِ Confirming the law which came before me. وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِي and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, Ismuhu Ahmad, whose name shall be Ahmad. Surah Saf, Chapter 61, Verse 6 A common trait Just a cursory glance, a rapid reading, a hurried look at the previous verse will satisfy the Muslim that Jesus Christ did indeed prophesy the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of God. The Muslim is puzzled at the stubbornness, vanity and tunnel vision of the Christian which prevents him from seeing his own inner light and listening to his conscience so as not to recognize the obvious. The Christian in turn is puzzled at the hard-hearted obstinacy of the Jews, a nation endowed with such creative genius which despite a thousand and one prophecies in their own Bible, the Old Testament, regarding the coming of the Messiah, are totally incapable of recognizing their Lord and Savior. Are they both somewhat blind? No, neither the Jews nor the Christians are necessarily impervious to truth. The trouble is that we all pick up prejudices from childhood. The Americans call it being programmed. Simply reading the verses or listening to lectures and getting that smug satisfaction of being in the know will not help spreading the truth. This is the age of the everyman. The age of the professionals is over. It is the duty of every Muslim, man, woman or child to get involved, each according to his or her capacity. Memorize the verse with its meaning as well as the quotations preceding and those that follow so that you may feel equipped to share our deen with non-Muslims. There are no shortcuts to da'wah. Produce your proof. Perhaps this is not the first time you are reading or might have heard about the prophecies in the Jewish and Christian scriptures regarding the advent of the last and final messenger of God, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the mercy unto all mankind. And perhaps you have at times made some half-hearted and skimpy efforts at suggesting that our Nabi Kareem was prophesied in the Holy Bible. But when proof was demanded, you were simply not able to, because you had not done any homework. Remember, there is no substitute for hard work. I believe what I say and I practice what I preach, inshallah. I have personally memorized various selections from the Bible in a dozen different languages, including Arabic and Hebrew. Not for sure, but because of the openings these snippets of religion create for me in propagating our faith to various language groups. Languages are the keys to people's hearts. In the land of the pharaohs Notwithstanding many assurances, I got stranded in Cairo for lack of an entry visa. A kind gentleman from the Al-Azhar, who was trying to help us obtain the relevant documents, got frustrated with the delay and in order to attend to his Friday prayers, handed me and my son Yusuf to a young Egyptian lady, well-groomed in Western attire. After much effort and time, she returned to us with the good news. Forty dollars, she said. I asked, for what? The visas? She answered. Twenty dollars for me and twenty for my son. But I am a guest of the government, I insisted. She said that she knew nothing about it, so I smiled and paid. From the lady's speech and deportment, I had sensed that she was well educated and a lady of culture. So undauntedly, I asked her again what her name was in my broken Arabic. However, her name was too novel for me to remember. I asked her further, are you a Muslim? She said, No, I am an Egyptian Christian. 
This was the opening I was waiting for. I began, Do you know that before Jesus Christ departed from this world, he told his disciples, and I started to quote, now in meticulous Arabic, a verse from the Arabic Bible, which I had memorized for opportunities just like this particular one. The translation I had no need to translate the above Arabic to her because as an Arab she understood the verse perfectly but for the benefit of those who do not know Arabic I give you its exact equivalent from the English Bible which I had also taken the trouble to memorize in my spare time. You can create that spare time also if you have true love for Allah's deen and wish to share it with others. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Holy Bible, John, chapter 16, verse 7. Al Muazdi, the Comforter. I implore my brethren who can read the Arabic quotation to memorize it together with the English translation above and create opportunities for using it. Learn the verses in conjunction with other languages that you know. There will be a definite all round improvement in your fluency and proficiency in preaching Islam to other people. The word Comforter above is Al Muazzi in Arabic. I asked the lady, who is the al muazzi of this prophecy? She said, I do not know. She was honest. She did not beat around the bush. So I said that we are told in the Holy Quran that Jesus Christ had told his disciples, وَمُبَشِّرٍ بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي And giving glad tidings of a messenger, مِنْ بَعْدِ إِسْمُهُ أَحْمَدْ To come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad. Surah Saf Holy Quran, chapter 61, verse 6. I continued that this Ahmad is another name for Muhammad, and Muhammad is Muazzi. Very funny, she exclaimed. These Egyptians, meaning the Muslim Egyptians, take us to the cinema. They take us, meaning Christian women, to the dance. But no one ever tells us anything about this Muazzi. Through her, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala armed me with a 14-pound sledgehammer before leaving Cairo airport. Alhamdulillah. And did I use that sledgehammer? An integrated explanation of Comforter slash Muazzi of John 16.7 and Ahmed slash Muhammad of the Holy Quran 61.6 will be slotted in place when explaining the ayat heading this chapter. Biblical Confirmation Remember that in the 6th century of the Christian era, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was chanting God's words, which was systematically put into his mouth, the Arabic Bible had not yet been translated. He would never have known that he was fulfilling and confirming the utterances of his predecessor, Jesus Christ, to the letter. Only for the Israelites. وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَا and remember, Jesus, the son of Mary, said, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, Inni Rasulullah ilaykum, I am the messenger of God sent to you, the Jews. Jesus for Jews only. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go ye rather unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Holy Bible, Matthew, chapter 10, verses 5 to 6. Not for dogs. And behold, a woman of Canaan came and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, my daughter is seriously possessed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, 
I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered her and said, It is not fair to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 15, verses 22 to 26. It goes to the credit of this Jewish prophet that he practiced what he preached. In his lifetime, he never converted a single Gentile, non-Jew. And of his hand-picked elect, his twelve disciples, he made sure that they belonged to his tribe, so that his other prophecy might find fulfillment. When the Son of Man, Jesus referring to himself, shall sit on the throne of his glory, ye the disciples also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Matthew chapter 19 verse 28 no new religion. Musattiqal lima bayna yadayya minat tawrat. Confirming the law which came before me. The Messiah was no mealy mouthed messenger among the Jews. Like his predecessors Amos and Ezekiel, or Isaiah and Jeremiah, he was trenchant in his condemnation of Jewish formalism and hypocrisies. His novel approach and militant preaching had created certain misgivings amongst the religious hierarchy. The scribes and the Pharisees came to him again and again to test him as to his bona fides. To allay their suspicions that he had brought no newfangled religion and that his was the confirmation of all the teachings that had gone before him, he says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law, Hebrew Torah, or the prophets, I am come not to destroy but to fulfill, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Holy Bible, Matthew, chapter 5, verses 17 to 19. Compare this phrase, confirming the law which came before me. The seven words at the beginning of this section on page 40, with the three verses of Matthew above, and you will not fail to note that there is no wordiness in the Quranic diction. It conveys God's message concisely, with clarity and precision. The father of truth chooses his own prophets, and he speaks to them in a voice stronger than the voice of thunder. Sayyid Amir Ali in the Spirit of Islam The Qur'an had come to confirm, correct and complete divine revelation or whatever was left of it in unworthy hands. وَمَا كَانَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ This Qur'an is not such. إِنْ يُفْتَرَى مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ As can be produced by other than Allah. وَلَكِنْ تَصْدِيقَ الْزَزِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ On the contrary, it is a confirmation of revelation that went before it. وَتَفْصِيلَ الْكِتَابِ And a fuller explanation of the book. لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ مِتْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Wherein there is no doubt from the Lord of the worlds. Surah Yunus, Holy Qur'an, Chapter 10, Verse 37 The Good News وَمُبَشِّرٍ بِرَسُولٍ جَأْتِي And giving glad tidings of a messenger مِنْ بَعْدِي إِسْمُهُ أَحْمَدْ To come after me, whose name shall be Ahmed. I will not apologize, nor am I called upon to apologize for reproducing here verbatim a word-for-word -word commentary on the word Ahmed from Abdullah Yusuf Ali's English translation. But before I do that, Permit me to pay a fitting tribute to the King Fahad Holy Qur'an printing complex in al Madina Al-Munawwara, which is turning out millions of Holy Qur'ans in many different languages. Their reason for using Yusuf Ali as a base for their reproduction is summed up in these words. A number of individuals have in the past ventured to translate the Qur'an, but their works have generally been private attempts, greatly influenced by their own prejudices. In order to produce a reliable translation free from personal bias, a royal decree, number 19,888, 
dated 16-8-1400 Hijri, was issued by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Fahad ibn Abdul Aziz, at that time the deputy prime minister. The translation of the late Ustad Abdullah Yusuf Ali was consequently chosen for its distinguishing characteristics, such as a highly elegant style, a choice of words close to the meaning of the original text, accompanied by scholarly notes and commentaries. Out of over 6,000 profound explanatory notes in Yusuf Ali's translation, the following is just one of three explaining the prophecy in the words of Jesus a.s. regarding the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Messenger of God. Note number 5438. Ahmad or Muhammad, the praised one, is almost a translation of the Greek word parikletos. In the present Gospel of John 14, 16, 15, 26, and 16, 7, the word comforter in the English version for the Greek word parikletos, which means advocate, one called to the help of another, a kind friend, rather than comforter. Our doctors contend that parikletos is a corrupt reading for parikletos, and that in the original saying of Jesus, there was a prophecy of our holy prophet Ahmad by name. Even if we read Paraclete, it would imply to the holy prophet who is a mercy for all creatures. Holy Quran, chapter 21, 107. And most kind and merciful to the believers. Holy Quran, chapter 9, verse 128. But when he came to them with clear signs, they said, this is evident sorcery. This concludes Ayat, verse 6 of Surah chapter 61 under discussion. The Prophet of Islam was foretold in many ways, and when he came he showed forth many clear signs, for his whole life from beginning to end was one vast miracle. He fought and won against odds. Without learning from men he taught the highest wisdom. He melted hearts that were hard, and he strengthened hearts that were tender and required support. In all his sayings and doings, men of discernment could see the working of God's hand. Yet the skeptics called it sorcery, jugglery, magic, forger and juggler. No, no. This great fiery heart, seething, simmering like a great furnace of thoughts, was not a juggler's. Thomas Carlyle, page 88 in his book, Heroes and Hero Worship. And they called his miraculous fulfillment of prophecy, magic, jugglery, enchantment, that which became the most solid fact of human history, Islam. End of chapter 2